Oh, I agree. And one of the biggest things, saddest things that I had last year about this time, I lost two family members to COVID. My beloved uncle and my cousin, which was devastating to me and within three days of each other. Oh, goodness. And it was so devastating. And through it, you know, of course, and I still, the whole year was on and off for me. That really set me into a place of not sure of, you know, what I was doing and what I really wanted to do and, and where my life was going. And I was really struggling. Um, but the big takeaway from it was in the midst of it, that whole month before they both passed away, which I would see them. I'd see my uncle every couple of weeks or whatever. I had spent more time with them. My uncle and I, he took me for my birthday out to lunch. And, you know, we, you know, we told each other all the time we loved each other. You know, we were, you know, we text back and forth and there was really nothing left unsaid. And I found the gratitude within the grief that I was so grateful for those moments in that time that I had spent with them. Welcome to the Wake Up With Gratitude podcast, where we share new and different ways to practice gratitude that you might not have thought of before. Our guests come from many different and diverse backgrounds, and the one thing they all have in common is a passion for gratitude. I'm Julie Boyer, a gratitude and gut health expert, and I love showing you different ways to practice gratitude that you might not have thought of before. Before we get into today's episode, I wanted to share something that our guest, Natalie Herner, inspired me to do. During our conversation, Natalie mentioned that November is the month of gratitude. Now, being a Canadian, I might say that October is the month of gratitude, but since I missed doing this in October, I am going to take Natalie's inspiration and do something very special for the month of November. I'm calling it 30 ways to practice gratitude in 30 days. Starting November 1st, I'm going to be sharing a short podcast episode every day through the month of November. All you have to do is listen in and you'll be inspired to find a new and different way to practice gratitude every day. Don't worry if you miss a day, you can always go back. And the best way to make sure that you're not missing out on any of the 30 days is to click on the subscribe or follow button wherever you're listening to the podcast. I'm looking forward to spending every day with you in November. Okay, friends, let's dive into this next episode of the podcast. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Wake Up With Gratitude podcast. I'm your host, Julie Boyer, and today I'm welcoming Natalie Herner to the podcast. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Julie. Great to be with you. I am so excited. Now, let me give you a quick introduction of Natalie before we get going. So Natalie is a passionately driven happiness coach and founder of Gifts of Gratitude. Utilizing her vast experience in positive psychology, she guides her clients on their journey to be happier and have more meaningful lives. Natalie's certified in positive psychology and positive psychology coaching by the Whole Being Institute, where she studied with noted professor Tal Ben Shar, PhD. Throughout this program, Natalie became licensed in facilitating the Inspire Your Ideal workshop. She has also received training at the Sedona Women's Institute to facilitate workshops and retreats for women. Through gifts of gratitude, Natalie empowers her clients to find true inner happiness. Her goal is to serve as a beacon of light, love, hope, and peace in the world. Oh, Natalie, so excited that we get to talk about all these things around gratitude together. And I love that you are, you're from my old neck of the woods, right? You're from the Buffalo, New York area. So I love starting the podcast, just hearing a little bit about your story and kind of how you grew up and how you kind of became a grateful person. Well, thank you so much. And I'm, I'm so grateful to be with you here today and to learn all about what you do. You're making such a difference in the world too. So grateful for that. Um, I grew up in Buffalo, New York, and I was the oldest of four children. And my home life wasn't that great. It was, you know, typical middle class family, but had it had a lot of ups and downs, mainly downs. And um, my mom really was a very depressed um person, very negative person. And even today she still is. So I grew up with a really 
deep negative bias, you might say, to um, to negativity, always like kind of seeing the worst or looking for the worst. And in some ways, I, I was optimistic myself, but growing up, it, it had an influence on me. And as I got older, I, um, I was a programmer analyst for one of the local banks for many years. And then I had three children in 20 months. And I, <laughs> and so um, I stayed home with my children. And then I found as I got a little older that I really enjoyed being a mom, but I had really lost myself. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that where, you know, you have this great life, but yet there's something seems to be missing. And I, I really was at some low points where I just wasn't sure of who I was anymore. And so um, it just happened. I saw an article in the Buffalo News in 2010. A woman had written in, it was near Thanksgiving. She wrote in and she talked about how gratitude had really changed her life. She, her daughter had given her a blank notebook and asked her to write five things she was grateful for. And her article went on to say how even the difficult, she was able to find something to be grateful for. And for some reason, her article really touched my heart. And I, I just knew right then and there, I had to create a gratitude journal or do something. And so it, it really changed my life in a lot of ways. And so I, I searched and I created a gratitude journal. At that time, I had been saving all kinds of quotes and things before we had phones and before we had all these things, I would write them down and I would save them. So I had a lot of things that were personal to me. And I found a local artist who helped me create a gratitude, a journal, a journal of the heart. And she did the watercolors and I added quotes and poems and it was supposed to just be for my own family. And then, um, over time, I just, I recreated it and then sold it on Amazon and, you know, it, it, this journey with gratitude, practicing it and having it be a part of my life changed my life. And it also led me on paths that I never could have ever imagined. Uh, I agree with you. This gratitude thing is a journey more than anything. It's certainly, there's no destination. You know, this is a lifelong practice and it's beautiful to me that you read one article at the right moment at the right time that inspired you on your own gratitude journey. And I think as you know, women who work in this gratitude world where gratitude is free, right? Generally, you know, there's no cost to it. You don't need money to have a gratitude practice or anything like that it's sometimes hard to know the impact of what you're doing unless somebody tells you. And it's stories like yours that keep me going as someone who continues to share the value of a gratitude practice, because sometimes it is, you know, there's one, there's someone listening right now that's going to hear your story, Natalie, and going to say, you know what, this is the time when I'm going to start my gratitude journey, because just hearing Natalie today I know this is the right direction for me. So I, I love that so much. And I, I'm like you, it's so funny. I have a book of quotes that I wrote, you know, I would write my quotes in and save them for years mm. long before you could Google, you know, who said this and what, right? Oh, everywhere I'd go, I'd go to a restaurant and I'd see, you know, something hanging and I'd be like, I gotta write this down put it on a napkin and take it home. And they just, they, you know, I just love quotes because they inspire us and it, they just seem to find us right at the right moment when we need something to uplift us and their meaning, you know, just looking at them and seeing what their, their meaning is. And, you know, it's, it's like the quote, I, it's by Thich Nhat Hanh, you know, mm -hmm. to live in the present moment is a miracle. And to me, that's the true gift of gratitude. Yeah. I mean, so many people think it's like, oh, it's got to be this guy. It's so simple and yet so profound. And I think people think it's this big mystery. And yet it's as simple as taking five minutes to walk outside and to really be present and to really engage all your senses and be amazed at what's in this world that we overlook, that we don't even see. So many times I've led workshops where, you know, I'll ask people to go through their home and bring something in to, to show people something 
that they walk by every day. And it was really funny because the one day a woman said, oh, I have this beautiful plate. I want to show you my sister had given it to me. And all of a sudden she lifted it up and she said, I never even realized there was a butterfly on here. And that's how we go through life. We, we get so accustomed to looking and just going and doing and not really seeing. And, um, and to be able to see that and bring yourself into that place is such a gift, not only for yourself, but for all those around you. Because then you bring that sense of wonder, that sense of gratefulness to everyone that you touch. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I love that. Gratitude is truly the easiest way I've ever found to bring you into the present moment to think about, you know, what is it that you can see that you're grateful for? What is it that you can feel and hear and touch and even taste, right? Those little moments of remembering Mm -hmm. to be grateful for just these things. And, you know, what I think is interesting, you briefly mentioned this, but you know, the gratitude, it gets us through the harder times. It seems, and that's, I think sometimes why it's easy to just kind of poo-poo gratitude. It's like when things are going well, gratitude doesn't really seem like it's doing anything, right? It doesn't really seem like it's doing much, but it's building up that habit. And then when things are going rough, then you can have that muscle in place to just help you to, to work through it. Oh, I agree. And one of the biggest things, saddest things that I had last year about this time, I lost two family members to COVID. My beloved uncle and my cousin, which was devastating to me, and within three days of each other. And it was so devastating. And through it, you know, of course, and I still, the whole year was on and off for me. That really set me into a place of not sure of, you know, what I was doing and what I really wanted to do and and where my life was going. And I was really struggling. Um, But the big takeaway from it was in the midst of it, that whole month before they both passed away, which I would see them. I'd see my uncle every couple of weeks or whatever. I had spent more time with them. My uncle and I, he took me for my birthday out to lunch. And, you know, we, you know, we told each other all the time we loved each other you know, we were, you know, we text back and forth and there was really nothing left unsaid. And I found the gratitude within the grief that I was so grateful for those moments in that time that I had spent with them. And even though it was over, um, you know, and that happened, I, I did, my brain had been trained through gratitude, which you, un- you, know, you understand too, the you know, I'm, it's rewired. Once you start looking for the good, even in the most difficult times of your life, your brain still wants to scan for the good. And so it was finding the good, even within those, those difficult moments. And so that's, that's what I tell people. I think, you know, like you said, people think, oh, you know, we just walk around, oh, happy gratitude. But it's in these deeper, darker places that when we really hit places that are hard, that gratitude shows up and it really shows up in a big way of being able to appreciate what we had and, um, you know, in the gift that we had, because um, I don't know if you read the book, The Stranger in the Lifeboat, not that I'm, you know, promoting it or anything, but I, I read part of that for the eulogy for my uncle. And, you know, we question, you know, why, why these things happen or why they're taken away, but we, we don't question why were they given to us in the first place, Mm. the gift. And so that's what, you know, that's what gratitude does. Thank you for sharing your heart with us. Thank you for honoring your cousin and your uncle in your kind words and with gratitude and Many, many people right now, of course, globally are dealing with these kind of losses in a difficult environment, in a difficult political environment, in a difficult healthcare environment and all these things. And to be able to come back and find gratitude and in those moments, those hardest moments that we go through, I think 
it is such, that is the gift of gratitude is when we're in those difficult times, when we're in a difficult moment in time for, you know, global suffering and loss, our moments of gratitude can have such an impact on the way that we deal with it and are able to move through, not to forget, not grief never leaves us, but it's about how we can show up in the world. Um, I want to ask a question about a little bit about the work you've done through positive psychology, because I'm just very curious because I know that they're related, but not quite the same. So how did you come across that work? Well, it was this gratitude practice. Really? I'm telling you, as I, as I started practicing and I did that article and then I started writing the journal and it was, you know, I keep networking and I'm always talking to people about what they do. I feel like I'm, you know, like this connector where I connect people who need things or whatever, but I also connect myself because I was talking to a woman that I know and I was saying to her, you know, I, I use these quotes and I created this journal and I really love it, but you know, I'd like to, you know, people were by my, my family and friends were saying, Oh, it's so beautiful. We don't want to write in it. So then I wanted to make it a little simpler, but I still wanted it to still have the same impact. And I was wondering using quotes and things like that, could I really publish it? Could I really put it out there? So this friend of mine says, oh, I know a lady who's published books before. So I met her for coffee and we had coffee together and I was telling her about all this and um, really lovely lady. I never saw her ever again, but she said to me, she says, there's this place in the Berkshires and she says it's called Kripalu. And she said, they have all these, oops, oops, I'm sorry. Ooh, that's bad. <laughs> sorry. That's like okay <laughs> oh all right we're gonna just pause for a moment we seem to have not lost natalie and we'll bring her right back in to continue her story about how she discovered positive psychology at Kripala. all right natalie's back okay. if you want to continue your story yes thank you sorry about that but anyway so i met this wonderful lady for coffee and she told me about this place in the berkshires called Kripalu, and i had never heard of it i didn't know what it was it was a you know a yoga center and she said if you look it up there's all these authors and there's all these people that go there and it's really wonderful so i didn't find out i found out a little bit about publishing but what it did was i i ended up taking a class at Kripalu, and it's a weird story because I ended up signing up for a course and I had gone to Boston and I was going to drive from Boston. My daughter lives in Boston. So I was like, oh, I'll just go from here. Well, it was when the marathon bombing happened and it was horrendous. I'm in Boston <laughs> and I'm going to go to Kripalu and I'm visiting with my daughter and everything's on lockdown. And I call Kripalu and I go, I, I can't come. I just can't do it. And it just happened that I signed up for another class that was um, with one of the, you know, the um, instructors for positive psychology. And I took her course, but she was telling us about this year long course in positive psychology. And she said, you know, it's going to be great. And we've got this great professor who's coming in. He's taught you know, the first class is on happiness at Harvard, and it's going to be great. And I really didn't know if I wanted to take a year long course, but it was the best thing that I had ever done. And this was the gratitude again, this, this journey, it's taken me on this wild ride. So I took this year long course, and it changed my life, the gratitude and the positive psychology, you know, because then I learned exactly what the gratitude was doing exactly about what the woman was talking about in her article originally about how she was seeing the good even within the difficult and i realized about neuroplasticity and rewiring the brain and how important and, and how much we actually can change of ourselves you know um i think they talk about that 50 percent is you know is what you inherit and then um i think like 40% is, um, 
is what you can change and 10% is what happens to you. So basically you have, you have a big chunk that you can choose how you really want to live your life, what you really want to look for, what you really want to see. And, you know, positive psychology has a model of spire, which is looking at the whole person, not just a piece, but looking at all the aspects, the spiritual, the physical, the intellectual, the relational, and the emotional. And I use that tool quite often, you know, especially if I'm struggling and I think, you know, what's off in my life? I'll look at those five pieces and see maybe, maybe I haven't been connecting with friends as much as I should have, or even with myself. It has to do with your relationship with yourself. Maybe you need more quiet time. So I look at it and try to find activities within those to build that up because as you build one, you build all of them strengthening them, you know, and that's, you know, looking at the whole person and gratitude fits in perfectly with every single one of them. So it's, um, it's, it's really, it, it's been a life changing and it's, it's just one of the best things because like I said, I grew up in a very negative place yeah. and for me to turn it and see things in a different way and in a better way and just reframe and realize that happiness is an inside job. These things, you know, we think sometimes, well, if this person changes or my kids change or my husband changes or whatever, that my life is going to be better. But we have to be the change. And we have to be the ones that look inside of ourselves and want better for ourselves and be our best friends. And to, um, you know, not to be self-centered because that's not really what it's about. It's it's really about finding that place within yourself that builds, like you talked about, that muscle, that muscle of, um, of happiness, the, you know, and gratitude is one of the biggest ones to help build that muscle. And what does the quote say? It's not, um, it's not success that, uh, it's not success that makes us happy, that makes us grateful. It's being grateful that makes us successful. Mm -hmm. So we really need to exercise that muscle before. I think people think it's opposite. Once I get this and once I do that and once, you know, I'm thin or once I get the job or once I buy something, I'm going to be better. And these are all temporary little moments that maybe bring us a little joy, but they're not lasting. The happiness I'm talking about is the happiness that that comes from inside and gratitude. Once you start to embody it and it becomes a part of your life, it's really there. It's, it's, you know, it's so crazy the way it shows up in so many places. And so, yeah, I hope that, I hope that explains it. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's interesting because when you do a gratitude practice on a regular basis. And, you know, we've talked about gratitude journaling, but like you said, there's so many other ways, even just like a couple minutes out of nature or looking at everyday objects with gratitude. You know, when we are faced with challenges or difficult times or our happiness is questioned, I find at least for myself that because that happens to all of us, even those of us that work in this, oh, I agree. lots I of agree. moments of being unhappy. What it allows me to do is to come back to finding things to be grateful for, to come back. And sometimes it feels like a real effort to like, I'm just like, I am so not grateful right now, but I also have been practicing for so long that I know that like, I have to look really hard right now because I know that I can find something to be grateful for and allow myself to work through this and still finding little things, you know, to bring me back to that place, even though I might feel really unhappy right now, just finding those little ways to get back to gratitude. So, you know, Natalie, I'd love to know now, I know you've had some shifts in your business and your you're going in some different directions. What is it that you're focusing on, you know, right now, or maybe in the next six to 12 months with how you're doing gratitude as part of your business and your lifestyle? What's kind of looking forward for Natalie? 
Well, what I what I really want to do, I think my biggest thing is like one of one of the things. It's funny. I went to a little island called Iona, Scotland. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. The veil mm-hmm. between heaven and earth is very thin. Oh. And one of the things on the hill of the angels, it said, um, "Be a beacon of light, of love, of hope, and peace." And that's really what I want to be. And if and if I can't do it in a big way, we can do it in small ways. Yeah. And that's what I tell people: small changes you know, make a big difference. We, we, you can't start building this big mountain of stuff. You, you have to start at the bottom, very small, if it's one thing a day to be grateful for. And where I'm going with this is that I still love, you know, um, speaking to people like you about this. It inspires me and lifts me just as much as it lifts everybody else to talk about this great work. Um, I love doing coaching, especially, you know, coaching and positive psychology, you know, mm. creating change for people. Yeah. But I also love coaching and gratitude too. I mean, sometimes people don't know where to begin or how to do it. And it's, you know, as simple as, you know, being accountable to somebody yes. into just, you know, in those simple, tiny changes of when you wake up that split second of saying, wow, I had a good night's sleep. I rested, you know, I have water you know, I, I have food, you know, just, you know, some things, you know, we take some of these things so for granted that we think, oh, everybody could do it, you know, and not everybody has all these things. And so we, we really have to look at that and see that. And I, and I hope that I can inspire people to see, you know, the extraordinary in the ordinary and Mm -hmm. to see that there's, there's so much to be grateful for and so many things to wrap around in your life, to give you that blanket of resilience so that when these tough things happen, we can bounce a little quicker back. Not that it goes away. We we don't ever want to say that gratitude minimalizes or positive psychology either that, oh, everything is happy. It's not. And if you were that way, I would tell you that that's, that's not, you're not practicing, you know, positive psychology or gratitude because we're not all, you know, we're all human. Yeah. We're, we have all the emotions, <laughs> yes, right? Exactly. We have all the emotions. And we need to feel them. Yes. And I just want to go back to something you said, which I think is really important right now, because, you know, we're in a climate where the word recession is coming up a lot and that seems scary and inflation is high and food prices are high and gas prices are high and all of these things and mortgage rates are up. All of these things can seem really scary and uncertain and not knowing where the future is and coming back to, like you said, is opening that fridge door and looking and being grateful that there's food in your fridge, you know, food insecurity has been rising. So when you can open your fridge door, your pantry door, and there's food in there, or you are able to go to the grocery store and buy what's on your list and not have to worry about paying for it. When you can fuel up your vehicle and be able to get yeah. where you want to go without being nervous about running out of money or funds for the gas, all of these things. And I, I want to be cautious, of course, of not using comparative gratitude. But I think a lot of the theme of what you've said today is that w- there's so much that we are taking for granted. And to get us through potentially a difficult winter as you know, as a whole it's remembering that these things that we've taken for granted for such a long time, um, focusing on what's working on the things that we do have will help us to navigate, I think, this this financial winter. So as we wrap things up, my friend, um, I just invite you to add whatever, you know, your favorite gratitude quote or one practice that you have just to help our friends that are listening um, as we navigate these, uh, these challenging times? Well, as we all know, November is the month of gratitude. And I invite you, I have out on my website, a 30 day free um, gratitude practice. Yay. Get on, try it for 30 days, get a little blank notebook somewhere. It doesn't have to be fancy. I do have journals if anybody wants any, but you, know, you can get a little notebook anywhere at the dollar store carry it with you or your phone, find find a little file, put in there. Oh, I saw something, put it in there or take a picture of something beautiful you see. And at night before you go to bed, look at those pictures, savor those moments. Think about the day. Who did you talk to? Who touched your life? Whose life did you touch? 
What did you see? How did it make you feel? Take that with you into your heart as you go to bed, and then you end up having a wonderful night's sleep. That's one of the other gifts of gratitude. Or you can also get on my website. I have free postcards and oh, um, three free postcards, which if you get on and you, and you sign in, and I think it's grateful for the number four in the letter U is the code. Get on and get your three free postcards. And one of the gifts of these is um, the experiments they've done. Marty Seligman, one of the um, fathers of positive psychology, talked about how writing a gratitude letter is a win-win for the recipient and for you. And it can give you like, I think a month or six weeks of writing one gratitude letter and writing something from your heart to somebody maybe you've never told how, what they, how they've touched your life. It could be something simple or something big. It doesn't matter. But just letting them know and not leaving those things to a time where maybe you think, oh, I should have said that. Get your three free postcards and let them know. Awesome. What's your website again? It is natalieherner.com. Awesome. We'll make sure all the links are in the show notes for you so you can grab your three free postcards and the 30 days of gratitude challenge that you've shared. Natalie, thank you again for gifting us with your time today. I am so grateful to have you here. Gifts of gratitude, natalieherner.com. Thank you, my friend, and wishing you much love and gratitude uh, as you show up in this world as a beautiful beacon of light that you are. Oh, and same to you too. Thank you so much for all you're doing, Julie. Thanks for sticking around till the end of the podcast. I appreciate you. If you're not already following us on your favorite app, make sure you click on the check or follow podcast so you'll be alerted every time there's a new podcast episode. If you enjoyed the episode and want to help us grow, here's some easy things that you can do. You can leave a review on your favorite app. You can share this podcast with a friend and send it directly. And you can also share through social media. Feel free to tag me on any posts in your stories and I'll repost. Thank you to Paul Tedeschini for doing the post-production audio for the podcast. And one last thing, I hope you're choosing to wake up with gratitude every single day.